OK, so we're going to do one question where the centre is not the origin. And then I'm going to do one last exam question that was the one I referred to that had to use matrix multiplication. So it's not really even a complex number, the last one. Anyway, we're going to try and find the coordinates of the vertices of an equilateral triangle with centre 5, 5 and one vertex at 3, 4. So it's not got the centre at the origin, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. So I'm going to draw what this looks like, because hopefully this is going to give us an idea of what the problem is going to be changed to. So at the moment, if I said this was 5, 5 here, this is where the centre of the triangle is. Remember, it's the centre of the triangle. And it says one of the vertices is at 3, 4. So if this is a 5 here and a 5 here, Let's say that 3 is going to be here, 4 is going to be here. So one of the vertices of this triangle is going to be at this point, which means if I was going to predict where the other ones would be, in fact, I should probably have done these vertices in a different colour. So one of the vertices is going to be here. That must mean the other one is going to be somewhere up here, and the other one is going to be somewhere over here, so that we come up with a triangle that looks like this. OK, now I'm going to do something to try and make this problem easier to find out where these coordinates actually are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this origin and that origin has coordinates 5, 5. And I'm going to move it from being 5, 5. Let's just write it in the same colour because I'm trying to be fussy. And I'm going to move it so that the origin comes over here. Let's do this next one in a different colour. Let's go for green. So I'm going to change the origin so that it goes from 5, 5 to this point, which is just going to be the centre. Now we knew what this other coordinate was. This coordinate, they told us, was 3, 4. And so it's also going to move for this triangle. And we're going to take it with a different colour. Let's do it in a purple. And so it's going to be somewhere over here. But actually, I can find out exactly where it would be. Because having gone from the 5, 5 point To the origin, which is obviously 0, 0. What I did was I subtracted 5 from the real part and I subtracted 5 from the imaginary part. Okay, if it was a different coordinate, if it was like 5, 2, then I would have subtracted 5 from the real part and 2 from the imaginary part to get it to the origin. So that's going to tell me what the coordinate of the other part is. When the other part moves, it was 3, 4. So where would it be now? Well, it's moved 5 to the left, because I'm subtracting 5. So it would be at 2, and it's moved 5 down, so it would be at minus 1. So what I actually did here is I have taken this complex number, which is 3 plus 4i, and I've subtracted from it 5 plus 5i, which gives me minus 2 minus i which is the, cor uh, the corresponding coordinate of minus 2, minus 1. So this coordinate that I have here is minus 2, minus 1. And now the problem is just going to be the same as before. So if I call this Z1 coordinate, if I call it minus 2, minus 1, which is minus 2, minus i, I'm going to try and find out where its new bits are going to be, whether they're going to be, I think, probably somewhere over here. I'm not very good at drawing these equilateral triangles. It seems to be a bit different each time. I don't know where it's going to land exactly, but it's going to be something like this. Now, remember, if I want to take it from one of these corners to another corner, so if I want to move it from this one to this one over here, all I need to do is multiply it by omega. And if I want to get to the next one, I need to multiply it by omega. And then we'll deal with the fact that we are doing a purple triangle and we'll shift it back to the red triangle afterwards. So that's what z1 is equal to. Now omega is the um, is going to be e to the 2 pi over n i, which is e to the 2 pi over 3 i, which we used in the previous question. But the way we'll work this out, it's going to be cos of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine of 2 pi over 3. But it's the same omega as in the last question, which is going to be, where have I got it written down? I've got it written down here. Minus a half plus root 3 over 2 i. So 
So it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to work out what z1 omega is, which is going to be minus 2 minus i multiplied by minus the half plus root 3 over 2i. And then I'm going to work out what z1 omega squared is by just multiplying it again by that. And if I did do z1 omega cubed, I'm hoping it will return me back to z1 and it would give me minus 2 minus i. So let's see if that actually works. OK, the way I did this before is I'm going to type in minus 2 minus i to come up with that as my answer. So I have it stored in my calculator and I'm just going to multiply it by minus a half. plus root 3 over 2i. And I get, why has this come out so horribly? I don't like the way the calculator's done this. Um, I think I might just have to multiply it manually. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it on my actual calculator, because that's behaved in a way I wasn't really anticipating that happening. So I'm just going to type in my calculator, minus 2 minus i and then i'm going to multiply put that as my answer and i'm going to multiply it by minus a half plus root three over two i oh, i think it was giving me the right it's just giving me something really unpleasant to be honest i don't know why it's quite doing that i'll just really quickly show you what it looks like on my camera. So that's what I've got here when I've typed it in. So that's 2 plus root 3 over 2 plus 1 here. And when I'm going to multiply it again, I'm going to get the next coordinate, which is here. And if I multiply it again, I go back to the original coordinate, which was minus 2 minus i. So it's going to just cycle through those three coordinates that I have there. So I'm just going to write these in. This first one is 2 plus root 3 over 2 plus 1 minus 2 root 3 over 2i. When I then multiply it again, I get 2 minus root 3 over 2 plus 1 plus 2 root 3 over 2i. And when I multiply it the final time, I do get minus 2 minus i. So these are the purple coordinates. But I don't want the purple coordinates. I want the red coordinates. So to get the red coordinates, I'm going to go from the purple ones to the red ones. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to undo this process that I did up here. And this process I did up here was I subtracted 5 from all of these coordinates from this first coordinate. I subtracted 5 and 5i five to go down here. So I'm going to add 5 to all of these coordinates to shift them back to where they belong. OK, so I'm going to do the first one in red. I had... Uh, 2 plus root 3 over 2 plus 1 minus 2 root 3 over 2i. And I'm going to add to this 5 plus 5i. And I'm going to just do that on my calculator because hopefully that is going to make life a bit easier. Plus 5 plus 5i. And we get 12 plus root 3 over 2 plus 11 minus 2 root 3 over 2i, which means that this coordinate, believe it or not, I'm just going to simplify this, is 6 plus root 3 over 2, and then 11 over 2 minus root 3i. Oh, no, no i for that one. So this is the one of the coordinates. Now I'm going to find the next coordinate by taking this information that I have here and doing the same process of adding the 5 plus 5i. So it is going to be 2 minus root 3 over 2 plus 1 plus 2 root 3 over 2i plus 5 plus 5i. I'm putting it back to where it should be now. So let me just quickly delete a couple of my lines here. And I'm going to add 5 and 5i. And this one gives me 12 minus root 3 over 2 plus 11 plus 2 root 3 over 2i. And when I simplify this coordinate, 
it'll be 6 minus root 3 over 2 and then 11 over 2 uh, plus root 3, no i required. And obviously the other coordinate, which was minus 2 minus i, if I did plus 5 plus 5 i, I am going to get 3 plus 4 i, which is obviously the coordinate 3, 4, that was one of the coordinates that the question had actually given us right here. So the technique for this was subtract the complex number, subtract the centre from the number. And then at the end, add the complex number back on. Okay. One last thing we're going to do here is a horrible exam question that I think is the best way to do this using matrices. So I just thought it'd be interesting to show you this. Okay, in an organ diagram, the points A, B and C are the vertices of an equilateral triangle and it does have its centre at the origin. The point A represents the complex number 6 plus 2i. Find the complex number represented by the points B and C, giving your answer in the form x plus iy, where x and y are real and exact. Well, this is going to be the problem here. Um, let's see. Actually, I wonder if we can do this without. Now, we can probably do this without matrices, but we might do both ways. So first of all, we have a complex number for the, the coordinate, sorry, is 6, 2. So this coordinate is 6, 2, and we're going to try and move it around to its different locations on the page so that you end up with the three corners of the triangle, which means that Z1 is 6 plus 2i, and our omega in this case is the same that it's been in all of the other questions, which is minus a half plus root 3 over 2i. So if I want to find out what the next coordinate is, it's going to be Z1 omega. So let me just get this typed in for a second. So it's going to be 6 plus 2i minus a half plus root 3 over 2i. So actually, no, this one doesn't have to be done with matrices. It can be done this way. So that's going to be 6 plus 2i. I'm going to try it on here. Let's go back to this beginning. It's nicer if you can see what I'm doing. 6 plus 2i. And I'm going to multiply that by minus a half plus root 3 over 2. Whoa. I does the same thing, which I find really annoying. So I'm going to just go to my camera and do this here. Um, let me just get this typed in so I can show you. Plus 2i. And that is going to multiply by minus a half plus root 3 over 2i. OK, let's go back and show you the camera. So I've got this typed in. Now I'm just going to press uh, equals, so I get the next coordinate, the next coordinate, and then I also go back to 6 plus 2i. So those are my three coordinates that I'm going to have for this question, okay? So I get minus 3 minus root 3 plus minus 1 plus 3 root 3i, which means this coordinate is minus 3 minus root 3, and minus 1 plus 3 root 3. And when I do z1 omega squared, I get minus 3 plus root 3 and minus 1, whoops, plus 3 root 3i, which gives me the coordinate minus 3 plus root 3. And then I get minus 1 minus 3 root 3 just with those brackets that we've got there. So here are the other two coordinates. Now, I could do this in a second with a matrix method. If we do it with a matrix method, um, then if we do it with a matrix method, you'll see. I'll just show it to you in the mark scheme because I've already spent a long time on this video for you now. OK, so it then says the point D, E and F are the midpoints of the triangle ABC. 
find the exact area of triangle DEF. So I've got a triangle now with some coordinates. I'm not going to be able to plot these perfectly, but I've got one over here, roughly one over here, I think roughly one over here, but it really doesn't matter. This is just a visual tool. And I'm going to try and find out something to do with the area of the triangle linked by the midpoints. So if I put the midpoints on here, here and here, I want to find out the area of this triangle. Now this little triangle, and hopefully we're going to spot, the area of this little triangle is equal to, there are one, two, three, four pieces, so it's equal to a quarter of the area of the big triangle. So I just need to find out the area of the big triangle, okay? Now the big triangle, there's many ways you could find this, but the way I'm probably going to do this, so I'm going to look at this diagram for a second. I know for this big triangle, I could split it up into these three pieces. And I know that these angles here are all 120 degrees. So instead, what I'm going to do is just look at a triangle like this with 120 degrees, and I'm going to find out the length of these sides. Now, the length of these sides, I can actually find out nice and easy because I know that this coordinate is 6, 2. So that means the length of one of the sides is going to be the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared, which is 2 root 10 or just root 40. And that side is also going to be root 40. So the area of the little blue triangle triangle DEF is going to be equal to a quarter multiplied by the area of this red triangle. Now this red triangle, there are three of these red triangles and each of these red triangles is going to be a half AB sine C, which is a half times A times B times the sine of 120. So that is going to be three over eight multiplied by 40, multiplied by the sine of 120, which is root 3 over 2. So let's just be lazy. That's root 3 over 2 times 40 times 3 over 8, and we get 15 root 3 over 2. And this was a real exam question. The other way you could do it is with matrices. So I thought it was useful to have a look at this. So one of the ways that they came up with the coordinates, you can see up here, they wanted to rotate it around 120 degrees around the circle. So they came up with this first coordinate, which is the one that we also came up with, uh, which is minus three minus root three. And then, yeah, the same as this one that we've got here. And then you can rotate it again using the matrix and you come up with this expression that we've got down, whoop, not down here that you've got down here, which is the same as that one that we've just got. And then there are many ways of doing this bit, but I'd like this one that we did. We came up with the area of the whole triangle, uh, which was three times the area of one of the little triangles, and it was a quarter of that. So we came up with 15 root three over two. So I think the best way of doing this was to do the matrix multiplication or to use, uh, I can't even see the one that's what we actually did here. So I think our method was probably better than any of the ones in the mark scheme. OK, if you've made it to the end of this, you have done really well. Um, that's all of the teachings that you need to be able to do exercise. What is this last exercise? Uh, 1G. But there's some pretty hard questions in there. So good luck with that. And um, let me know if you need any help on those ones.